the whole process of balance. So what we're going to do is take you through an example of a sort of class that I've been working with, with real life clients. And I just do workshops and we run a class each week. And this class that I'm teaching you is stuff that I think you can also teach your clients easily by Zoom, okay? So what I need you to have as your setup is one foam roller, a chair, it doesn't have to be a fancy chair. If you have marker loose, that's fantastic if you don't use them. And if you've got a ball, I call the coronavirus ball is excellent, but if you just have a Pilates ball of some sort. And we're going to go through this. Now, my starting point is that I would like you to start with a test exercise. When we work with balance, it's really important to layer your test exercises. And for now, we're just going to do a very simple test exercise proprioceptively. That is standing on one leg, okay? Stand on one leg, count for how long you can do that, okay? Now, at the moment, we're going to keep our eyes open and no movement of the head. If you, you know the story, have a foam roller or a wall close by if you've got clients and you count how long you can do this for, okay? So hopefully you can do it for about 30 seconds on one leg and we'll do the same on the other side. This is just for you to note, see this, you can see my special side, um, to note what's good and what's bad for you or special. And throughout the session, we're going to come back and forward to this. Okay, so it's really nice to give clients those test exercises. Then let's make sure safety procedures. If you have clients, make sure you're close to the wall or a chair. Okay. Now the starting series that I'm going to teach you is you're going to sit on a chair. With you. I'm going to bring my chair closer so you can hear me. Okay. So I'm also going to have just a marker loom base just nearby just to help. Okay. So you'll see that this series. Now, I kind of like using the chair because it's kind of safe, especially with, with clients with balance issues. So, phone roller in front, and you're going to put your hands on top of the foam roller. Now, all you're going to do is just hinge forward. Now, I would like you to think that you're working with one of the ladies of Double Bay and, you know, with the big rings and you just look at them, keep an eye on those rings and then come forward, okay? So we're working on a postural reflex here. When you lean forward, your spine muscles just activate, but, we're also just bringing in a little bit of work around the eyes, a really important visual system. Okay, about five to 10. And if you press down onto the foam roller and get that little bit of lift is really nice. Okay, all manageable. Don't forget to smile for me. Now, your next one that we're going to do is we're going to take the visual and we're going to add a little bit of head turning. So remember the head turning involves your vestibular response. So forward, and you're just going to drop your head to the side and back. You go forward and it's like you're making a U shape. And back. Let's just do about three or four. And to be honest, this is a nice exercise just to help clients who've got spinal injuries or back pain and they just need to get that spine working. I have a client coming in and observing, a teacher observing here from the side and another's just walked in. Through. Now I'm going to put my Markaloo base on top. Okay, now you'll see why in a sec. So what I like to do is put my hand on the foam roller base and the mark loop. And I'm just going to twist to the side and back. So you're going to use the visual aspect here as you move round. 
So we've got a tiny little rotator disc. But what I also like about this, you're not moving the foam roller from side to side yet. You're just keeping the foam roller still for now. So eyes here. And what we're doing, and you can put both hands there or just one hand on top if that helps, is what we're doing is we're trying to help your eyes in the trapping. Okay, we did a bit of that this way, but now movement of the disc will help just a little bit more. And I also like this because it just helps you get a little bit of rib mobility, better breath, less anxiety, less anxiety, better balance in some cases, okay? So what we're going to do is just go from the side and the Shannon, the one here, please, yep, and to the side. Now, what you're going to do, oh, obviously this is such a good deal at the, we've got sirens happening as well, and just turn into the side. Oh, fire trucks, oh dear. It's a shame that calendars never look, live up to the fire members in my area. And just going to the side and back and forward. So hopefully you just get that sense of the dial as well. Some of you are going, you're teaching me gyrotonic. I'm going, shh. Now, what you're going to do now is keep one hand on the disc and one hand on the foam roller. Okay. So what you're going to do is go forward and dial and then you're going to really try and dip your head down so you're going to add that little aspect ribs but also adding a little bit of vestibular work okay get those little ear crystals moving and back and i just went the wrong way then so <laughs> So yeah, if I went this, if my hand was here, I go to the opposite way of the hand. Because fire truck distracted me. And back. that's my story, and I'm going to stick to it. Okay, and just and around. And what's kind of nice here too is with your foam roller, you just keep doing while I blabber, is what's kind of nice with the foam roller is it just gives that nice closed chain for people so that it helps them feel a little bit more comfortable about their balance, okay? So remember, we're working on visual, vestibular, and a little bit of the proprioceptive stuff, okay? So if you want, you can just have your clients who are particularly nervous about balance, and you can just put the foam roller in between their knees, and you can just put your hands on there and get them just to feel they can't, they just move their body to the foam roller. Okay, the foam roller is not moving. You can bring the eyes right to those big diamonds and back. So you could just do that. And that might be a really nice beginning for some clients. Okay, they might feel more confident with this before you add that foam roller. Now, but you can choose whatever, and it's like a little adductor work anyway, so it's good. Now, what we're going to do is add just some work on focus of the eyes. Now, what happens with a lot of people with balance issues, their visual systems affected, particularly their periphery, or a lot of clients post-stroke have lost fields of vision. So what's nice is to use some simple ways to help them focus on their visual system. And another reason why you might have clients with visual problems would be cataracts, macular degeneration. Uh, all of these things can impact on their vision. So getting them to be able to converge and change their eyesight is really useful. So I start just with my hands on there, the foam roller as a rest, and then I just move my arms forward, palms open and back. So for some clients, you might need to have, I start with the disc because it's really kind of big and it helps somebody focus, okay? And that. And focus and that. And part of the reason I like this is if I've got clients who've had a stroke, a lot of them have problems holding their arm up so that this can help them do that. But no, hopefully none of you have had a stroke. Or, well, there are quite a few people have, so 
What I like to do too, and these are two variations, again, just using your foam roller, your ball to train your visual system. It's either the ball or that, whichever you feel comfortable. I'm a bit fond of the coronavirus ball myself. Is I take the ball, I put that on top of the foam roller. Anyway, we'll use this now. You're just going to take the ball, the that forward and back. Forward and back, adjusting your eye length as you go. Okay. Bring it to the nose if you want to, but just to the foam roller is fine. Forward and back. Okay. Generally, I would get my clients just to do that as a starting point, see how they feel. And one of my clients in the balance class that I teach found that's a really nice way. And she has actually overcome a lot of vertigo by just getting this eye training. Now, the next option that we can do here is you're going to do your eye clocks. So you're going to take your eyes up and down, okay? Now, up and down. I like to use the ball as a nice visual cue. Now, these are some of the recommendations that come from the Australian Stroke Guidelines as to training for people to who have lost visual fields after a stroke. But these are really kind of useful for clients who have had cataracts and cataract surgery because a lot of them have lost field of visions or peripheral vision. And so training them how to regain that vision is really nice. So you'll see that in your notes, I've written progressions. You would go progression from just your eyes moving to your eyes and head moving. Because when you add your eyes and head, you're actually adding visual, vestibular and proprioception. Remembering always that when it comes to balance, there are, there are multiple systems involved. So don't try and overwhelm somebody by having them try to do all three systems. Add one system, check that's okay. Work on that for a few things, then add the second system. If that's not working, you take that second system out and try the third system. Identify which of yours is a strength. Sorry if I'm lecturing you, but hopefully you understand. Now, what I suggest also when you do this is that if you're working with your client, make them work from six o'clock to 12 o'clock, nine o'clock to three o'clock first, because those are kind of easy. When you're working into the corners, you're using different cranial nerves, uh, your abducens, your um, abducted, uh, so not just, and your uh, re obliques, obliques muscles, and you know, that changes things a little bit. So just to understand, get these ones first, then add these in. Be careful also that when you're doing this, and I'm working really fast, so you just work slowly, is if you go too fast, you're actually going to get people a bit muddled, especially across this way for the nine to three, because you will be triggering something called the vestibular ocular reflex or the VOR, and it can make people even dizzier. So just keep that really slow as you go, okay? See how that feels, everyone? <laughs> Hopefully you feel not too dizzy. Um, and what I'd like you to do is just grab your mark loop or your um, foam roller. I'm gonna say, I like the mark loop just, to, but let's just do your foam roller if you've got your foam roller there and just put your feet on the foam roller and just, as you're sitting, roll your feet forward and back. So you're going, how's this relating to balance? Well, it is about training your proprioceptors just to feel comfortable there. I'm wearing shoes, so it's probably not the best, but we'll just work with that. And back and forward, okay? Again, with your clients, this becomes something that we're going to progress in 
when we do standing work. So for those clients who are particularly nervous about balance, it's nice to introduce it seated. So what you're going to do is then just with one foot down on the floor, one foot on the foam roller, just roll that forward and back. Getting your client used to the idea of something slipping away. Okay. For yourself, you can just be doing this for yourself. So don't panic. Again, I'm zipping through this pretty quickly, but you know the rules probably 10 to 15 reps of each. How's that feeling? Nice on the feet, yeah. Okay. And especially for you, all of you in lockdown, you know, you're probably not moving around as much as you would used to, although I found that during lockdown, I seem to be stepping on more log Lego than I've ever done. Um, so you're just going to have your feet now on your marker loop, and you're just going to march from side to side. And the idea about this is that this is just about to open your ankles. Again, getting people balancing. And I like standing on the marker loop because you can really dome the feet, okay? So this is the mushroom position that I put in your notes. And you can get those intrinsic muscles of your feet working. It's forward and back. And then you can just circle your feet around a little bit as well. If you would like, this is also when you might add something in like closing your eyes, okay? So just do this with your eyes shut and let your legs go forward and back. And just see how that adds to your feeling. Some people start to feel a little bit dizzy by doing this. And it's better to feel dizzy seated than standing, that's for sure. If you want to, you can then open your eyes, do the feet rocking and turn your head from side to side. Okay, so just to add that little variation of feet rocking, turn your head side to side. So. You can go side to side. You can drop your ears down. Looking around the corner, just checking to see if there's the potential for an open door somehow and back. Then you can just close your eyes, move your head and rock at the same time or move your head and eyes independently. These are all additions or progressions. I don't think that you should be adding all of these in together, but when if you're working with a client over the next couple of weeks, these might be an addition that you take in and out and monitor. Okay, you're with me so far? You're fine? Yeah, okay. So stand up, see how that feels. And as with everything, go to your test exercise. Stand on one leg, see how long you can manage this, okay? Has that changed from the beginning of the class? If you need to, be next to a wall or a chair, it's okay. And then just change. So hopefully you can get to 30 seconds or you've added a few seconds to that, okay? Now, knowing that before we were just really challenging your visual system and a little bit of your vestibular. If you've noticed an increase in your balance following those exercises, you might go, hmm, okay, I need to train a little bit more on my visual system or my vestibular system because obviously when I train them, I get a better balance outcome, okay? Any questions so far? Put your hand up, turn your thing on, ask any questions from now or you can leave your questions to the end. That's okay. Everyone's fine. Ooh. Next, what we're going to do is come to standing. Now, I'm just going to move my chair out of the way, but with my clients, I like to make sure they keep their chair very close. So we're just going to repeat. Now, you can do this two different ways. One way is to be with your back against the wall and you just hinge forward like that. Now, I kind of like this one because it just helps you get your pec muscles open. 
again, helps with breath and stress. But for some clients, that's way too much. So your other option would be is to stand with your back against the wall, hand on the foam roller, and do exactly what we just did, seated. Okay, so what we've done is progress the challenge just a little bit. Just do your arms hinging forward, and then you could do your little rotations. This is if you have the foam roller in front of you, and then I'll show you the variations with the foam roller behind your back. You do the same thing with your hand on the marker with base, go forward and rotate round, forward, rotate round. Nice. Does that feel good, ladies? Fantastic. So I'm sorry, we have guests, and, and I know that's mean for those of you who are in interstates. So just don't dog us in. Now, what you're doing is if you've got your oh, back. Can I just interrupt for a second? It's Helen. How are you? Um, you could lift one leg up as you rotate, yeah? Yeah, eventually, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's a progression. And so um, you'll see at the end of the notes, I've added eyes and legs. Yeah. But, and you can add that as a progression. You'll see that I just did just a little bend of the knee. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I, at the moment, I'm just trying to make sure we add in layers of the understanding of balance because yep. I find what often happens is people think that balance is about standing on one leg or yep. on soft, yep. soft textures and they fail to understand some of the other concepts. Right. And, this, and this becomes, I think, particularly important for us when we're working via Zoom with a lot of our clients who probably need the balance training. So we have to be really careful about too much, anything that's going to put them in a vulnerable state unless we're really sure that they're ready for it. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep, thank you. So with the, so I would start with the foam roller in front because that's a progress, progression of the seated version. Then same thing, foam roller behind the back and you can go do your little hinges again. And what I also like here is sometimes just to put my hands onto the wall, fingertips up, and get the opening of my pec, but also start to strengthen my triceps. Okay, so I want some of the backline muscles working. Remembering that when clients are stressed or have some neurological damage that's affecting their balance, they're going to be very flexor muscle dominant. So trying to restore some strength or response into their extensors is really important. Now, if your clients are, so you're not really sure that they can do this, I would say when you teach them on the Zoom, have that chair in front of them, get them to lean forward and just touch the chair and back. And what I really love about this particular exercise is that we're doing sit to stand. Now, how functional and helpful is this? Because really, we all want to be able to get off the toilet in our old age. Now, if we're going to add that challenge, you can then, having them standing, getting their base, the, the bright color or a ball, you get them to come forward and down, okay? Forward and down. You can then add all your directions. Okay, girls right? Okay, I don't want to do that. And then you can add your eyes and then you can even, dare to try this, lean forward with your eyes shut. Okay, feel how disturbing that is. And that, but thinking that for when we're working with balance, one of the times that people might be likely to fall is when they're getting out of bed at night time and they really don't have their visual system to help them. So you really want to have ways to help people feel comfortable and trained in not 
just relying on their visual system. Okay. So all doing well there. Now I'm just going to show you one idea. You won't have this board at home, but you may have a refrigerator or some form of magnetic thing. So I just have this at here. So I'm just going to get you just to see what I have here is you'll see that all I've done is I've got an array of domes on here. Now you may not have all of these, but I've got different domes and different colors. So if I need to, what I'm going to do is, and I'll bring this further forward there. So what I'm going to do is that you can see that I'm using this as a clock. Now you might, I've just got these domes, but you might use stickers or something like post-it notes, okay? And when you're doing this, this is just working on the ideas from the Australian Stroke Guidelines, but you can then go from the centre and tell people, give people markers as to 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, all of those sorts of things just to help them. Someone asking me a question? No. Okay. Yeah. So starting seated, starting there. Now, the reason why I like the magnetic thing is that this is not balanced, but then I can use this as something to roll up and down. So you can use a ball to roll up and down, and that's more about stroke results. Okay, you with me so far? Everybody feels like they've got there. Now, what we're going to do, sorry, you didn't, I hope you were expecting not just a move, but a little bit of a lesson, okay? So what we're going to do here is I'm going to get you to put your foam roller down on the Excellent. ground. Excellent, thank you so far. So far, tops. Tops, you understand where I'm going? Okay, cool. Yep. Um, again, so I'm going to put the foam roller. Now, if you've got a client, put them in front of the wall or put them in front of your chair. And we're going to do exactly what we did before. Just rolling your feet back and forward, challenging your balance, I know. And you're going to challenge yourself for your lunge as well. Okay? So exactly what you did seated, standing. No, it's, sometimes I think half the time it's just common sense, but you never know. And so, again, nice little way the clients have got that there. But what I would also do is the same idea, standing on the Mark Lou, because it's a little less balanced, okay? So, like on the foam roller, it's a really big thing for you to stand on. But now we want to really work each foot individually. So I'm just back in that same mushroom rocker position. Back and forward. And then you can just work there. Okay, someone's asked me a question. Am I? Yep, you can add a half foam roller as you like. But again, remembering that because for a lot of this, most of our clients probably aren't going to have as many toys as we do. So I'm really trying to keep it to two or three props. If they, some of them might not have one or two, but whatever they have, you can work it out. A half bone roller is nice. Again, it's one big thing. And so for a client with vulnerable balance, it's a really good starting point. So I have one here. So if you're not sure, there. Oops. So just working back, back and forth like that is nice. And then you can, I sometimes like to add all different layers to this. So I might have the client walking the gang rope or something like that, either on the phone roller, way too balanced, too much challenge for some of my clients, the half one is okay. What we're going to do while we're at the wall, we're just going to do a couple more reflex response exercises. And then I'm going to just do a couple more standing ideas with the Markaloo. And then we're adding something else, okay? <laughs> Actually, before we do that though, just stand on one leg again. Add in that test exercise.
How are you going? Can you feel your balance getting better? Isn't it nice? And then the other day, I've, as I said, I've been teaching a balance class on Wednesdays this year. And I've had one lovely lady who really has got a lot of balance issues and she's been using, she's only in her 60s, so she is very young really, has been using a walking stick because she's lacking confidence and she hasn't been able to get in and out of a chair because she's feeling like she's going to fall. Two weeks ago, after maybe just six lessons, and I mean, she's seen all the vestibular specialists and all of that, she got out of the chair with that, this chair without any hesitation and she turned up to class without her walking stick and she walked here and I was so proud of her. So it's, you know, it's kind of nice. And when during lockdowns we do classes at home over the Zoom, so everything is aimed to be able to sustain people. Okay. So hopefully you're all feeling a little bit better from that. Now, I just want to add a couple of little options here as well. Again, this is about a reflex response. I'm just gonna come forward a bit so you can see. Just shove that out of the way. And what we're going to do is just come to the wall, put your hands on the wall, and you just lean into the wall and then push yourself back and away, okay? So just try a couple of that. This is just trying to activate some of your postural reflexes. Remembering that balance, while we're talking about the sensory system input, we also have to think about the reflex responses, okay? So push yourself in and step back. Now, with some clients, what I like to do is have them stand in a little arc and do the same thing way too hard for many people, but you stand in the arc and rock back, okay? Um, nice little response. Again, you can do that. Sometimes also you can then add things like the visual system where they roll forward, get their postural response and turn their head to one thing. So like I use something bright colored, normally that's me, but um, if not, there's something bright colored that I'll put. So I'll get them to turn their head so that they can see that. So I'm challenging visual and vestibular as well. Yep, lunge forward. Um, Belinda, I think I can see you. Just one foot forward. Sorry, you'll see what I mean. One foot forward and lunge. And then if you can, you go one foot forward and lift that leg up. Okay. Don't have too much fun. We can't have fun. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It was cancelled in 2019. Okay. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back. Have a look. See how that feels? Test. Go back to your test exercise. Stand on one leg again. See how that feels. See how that's changed or not changed. Okay. Now, some of you have seen me teach this before, so I'm sorry if I'm boring you by showing you the same thing all the time. I like to add this sometimes in as well. So just to help them track, get their glutes a little bit stronger and just come up and down. Now, I either use the base of the Markaloo as a bright spot or a ball. And first of all, I just get them to do the lunge, keeping their eyes fixed on one spot. I hate them using the fixed spot for too much though. So then what you'll do is take that from there and move your head. Okay. Try that. Eyes to there. You know what, you can do this on scooter when you're back in the studio, that's not a problem. Add these little challenges, but I like this because it helps the knee tracking as well. So just do a few on the other side as well. Now, obviously, if you've got a client who can't do this standing, I might try and get them to do something like this kneeling, okay? 
So I'll just have them sitting like that. It's not the same sort of work on the glute, but it does help with the idea of tracking with that knee so that they're not rolling the knee too far and they're still getting their eyes. And then what you can do is make it a little bit fun and make their eyes follow around. And the reason why you want the eyes to follow around is it's a vestibular challenge. And the kind of like using the dome, the flat dome more than a little ball, because sometimes some of your clients, the little ball gets a bit too clumsy for them to manipulate, but this is just that little bit bigger. And when clients have really got visual issues like me, you really need to have that there. I know, the girl, I, my teachers are sitting there going, how do you beat these things up? And I'm just saying, gin, people, gin. <laughs> you just, just need to get your gin varieties organised. Keeps you creative. How's that feel? Try the other leg as well if you can. So don't just do one side. How's that feel, Sydney? Yeah. Shannon, is that okay? So these could be, you know, some of your older clients. It's a really nice option even for our mothers who won't listen to us. Um, <laughs> hard to believe that people wouldn't listen to their mothers. Um, my son doesn't listen to me. Okay. Once you've done that, again, come back, do your test exercise. Stand on one leg, see how that feels. What is that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't do this leg properly, so yeah. Just back and forward, try each side, see how they go. Again, and also what's nice is I really like using cool. these test exercises. One is it's a nice measure, but two, it really helps your client's self-efficacy. It may reminds them, oh my goodness. This is getting better. And even five seconds is a great way to encourage clients to get better. If they can get better in four in 15 minutes doing four or five exercises and they can add five seconds to their time, that's great. And that they're likely to repeat it. Okay. So next ones that I want us to do is grab your timber bases if you can. So we've done the mushroom rocking and I'm just going to add these ones here. So I like to put these down and I'm, I have different colored ones and I'm very impressed I've got matching socks on today, okay? So if you want, you can put your foam roller in front of you. I won't do that so that you can just see. And you're just going to lift your heels up and you're going to do a little plie to start with. And so what I'm really trying to do here, if you can see, is I'm just trying to get you to get that sense of lift or vertical axis, okay? Then what you can do is work on your pivot. And work on your pivot. So get your hips moving, but remembering for a lot of our clients, Part of what we're trying to do is help them to feel, feel comfortable with their reaction time, moving around joints, okay? Getting around, how's that feel? And don't. <laughs> you can find your inner ballerina. And again, it's nice to use the big rotator discs, but they are very expensive these days and two or $300 for one rotator disc might sort of be prohibitive for clients at home. Now, what I also like to do as part of their people's balance training as well, and I'm sorry, I'm, I like to put all sorts of different colored domes and things like that around. And I like to have the flat, flatter sort of domes of sorts 
so that you can make people work. Oh, sorry. I'll go back here. You can then work on clients' reaction times, okay? So you can say the same idea of your clock. Take yourself to one o'clock. Take yourself to five o'clock. Take yourself to 11 o'clock. You can have all sorts of things. So long as they don't slip, okay? So the reason I like this is, and I like different colors, because you're helping people's visual systems. You're helping people with their reaction time, but you're also helping them with their proprioception. Okay, so it could be pillows on a non-slip mat. It could be socks if you're my, if you've got an 11 year old son. It doesn't really matter so long as it's safe and a really bright contrasting color is going to be better for people than too much beige, okay? Um, let me just double check what I was gonna have. Oh yes. Da, 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 da. And then what I wanted to do is add in the slider concept. Is everybody with me so far? Any questions so far? No, okay. So the other sort of concepts that I want to work on, we're talking about reaction time, is I'm wanting to use the slider idea. Again, just like we were doing with the standing foam roller and the lunge, I want you to think of clients fall when they step on things and they don't react. So you're training them to respond very quickly. I like the Coraline for some of this work, but the rotator discs are a really nice way to do this as well. And just to step forward and back. Um, you can do your whole ballet series, all of those things. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm sort of making a little obstacle course to slide helps me get my glutes stronger, but it helps me again work on my visual responses and organization, okay? Remember balance is something that people are affected at any age and there's no doubt that stress impacts on people's balance responses, okay? There are more and more um, uh, ideas or more and more diagnosis 